plot a chart of their conductivity versus frequency for an inductor. So, if you think about it, an inductor is just a piece of wire for an ideal inductor. So it's going to have an infinite conductivity at zero frequency DC, right, because it's just a piece of wire. And then, as the frequency goes up and up, the magnetic field is going to have to change more and more. And so it's going to have less conductivity because the magnetic field resists that change. So if you think about it, if the magnetic field doesn't have to change, it has nothing to resist. And um, the magnetic field will be really happy, right? But as the frequency goes up, the conductivity goes down because the magnetic field has to change more and more and more. And so it be behaves more like an open uh, gap rather than a short circuit as the frequency goes up because the magnetic field has to change more and more and more. So this approach is zero. So you could say as the, the limit, as the frequency approaches infinity um, of this inductor function is equal to zero. And the limit as the frequency approaches zero of this inductor function is equal to infinity, which means um, basically DC, it's um, short circuit, and AC, the higher the frequency, the less the um, conductive it is. And so you can see how this relates to other uh, components if we plot this for a capacitor. Now you notice what the capacitor is, is the opposite. A capacitor, instead of an inductor being a uh, closed uh, wire, a capacitor is totally open. So at DC, uh, a capacitor has zero conductivity because it's just open, right, ideally. And then as the frequency goes up, um, the conductivity of the capacitor goes up because it can transfer charge between those two plates um, with a higher frequency. So at an infinite frequency, a capacitor is a dead short. And a resistor is the same, ideally. I mean, this is, this is for an ideal component. A resistor has the same conductivity no matter the frequency. And so by uh, changing, by, so uh, the property, the, the reason this is useful is to making RC and LC and LCR uh, filters because we can um, sort of put two components together and send one through and the other to ground. So in an LC filter, you know, you have one goes to ground and one uh, goes through. So if you take, say, the inductor and put it to ground, what you're going to do is you're going to filter out all the low frequencies because you're sending basically this graph to ground. So where is this graph more? At low frequencies goes to ground. At high, not so much. They're blocked, right? So what you can do is you can make an L, so an inductor is L, like an LC filter, sort of a bandpass filter, if you notice, because of the two graphs are opposite. Someone's probably going to correct me on that uh, in some minute detail, but basically the, the um, simple part of it is you can use these graphs here that I've shown you to create um, uh, dynamic uh, passive, not dynamic, sorry, passive filters um, by playing with these um, values. So if you're to make, say you're to make a filter, right, and you're going to take, um, you're going to take something, something here, and something here. And this point goes to ground. This is your input, and this is your output. Okay? So basically, what you're controlling here is you're controlling what goes to ground, in other words, what's gotten rid of, and what goes to the output. So say you put a resistor here, okay? So that's going to be the same. As, as in the input, because the resistor, if you remember, is the same. But then you put a capacitor uh, going to ground. So uh, all your low frequencies are uh, going to be uh, allowed to get through to the output. They're not going to be taken to ground, because for a capacitor, there's no conductivity at low frequencies. Uh, the high frequencies, however, are going to be shorted to ground, because at higher frequencies, the conductivity goes up. So you can tell that since the high frequencies go to ground and the low frequencies don't, an RC filter is going to be a low pass filter because the high frequencies are sent away to ground. And it's just the opposite. If you put the capacitor here and the resistor here, what happens is the high frequencies are blocked. They're blocked from even getting to the output. 
the, sorry, the low frequencies are blocked from even getting to the output, and then all uh, of them are sent equally to ground. And so what happens is you get then a high pass filter because the low frequencies are blocked from getting to the output and they're all sent equally to ground. So say we take the same concept with the inductor that we just learned, right? We take a resistor here and inductor to ground. We've just created a filter where everything goes equally through uh, the resistor and then if we take a low frequency and we send it, that's going to go to ground because the inductor is very conductive. If we take a high frequency, however, it's not going to go to ground. It's going to go through because the inductor doesn't conduct high frequency, so we've created a high pass filter. But if we switch them and we put the inductor here and the resistor here, uh, not everything is going to go equally through the inductor like it went through the resistor. In fact, what's going to happen is the high frequencies are going to be blocked from even getting to the output. The low frequencies are going to get to the output very easily and they're all going to be sent equally to ground and so you're going to have created a low pass filter. And then you can take LC filters with an inductor and a capacitor. Those are a bit more complicated. If you put an inductor here and a capacitor here, you let the low frequencies get through uh, here and you, so the low frequencies can go from here to here and the high frequencies can't and then the high frequencies um, are sent down. So if you put an inductor right here and a capacitor right here you can think of it as these using these graphs and the part here passes so the part of the graph that's high will pass and the part of the graph that's high here will fail. So if you notice if we put an inductor here um, this, this part that's high here, the low frequencies will pass and the, cap, uh, the capacitor, the high frequencies will fail. So we've created a low pass filter. Now if we do the opposite, and we put the, if we put the capacitor at the input and the inductor going to ground, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the high frequencies and let them pass, and the low frequencies are going to go fail and be sent to ground. And so in that way, we're going to have created a high pass filter. Put is the I, our output is the O, right? If we put a resistor as this middle bridge, and we put a capacitor here and an inductor here, what's going to happen is both of these graphs, the capacitor, so everything's going to go equally through the resistor. The resistor just sort of isolate the two elements, if you will. Everything's going to pass and fail. Both the inductor graphs are going to pass and fail where they're high. So in fact, you'll notice all the low frequencies are going to fail, all the high frequencies are going to fail, but there is a spot in the middle where the frequencies will not fail, right? Because they'll be they'll al allowed to go through sort of where these graphs intersect. This is what's called a bandpass filter because you're allowing a specific band of um, uh, frequencies to pass where these graphs intersect. So, for example, say you were to have the specific graph, um, and I can't really, you know. If, if you were to take uh, the graph of a specific, uh, say, inductor that you were using, it looks like this, and a capacitor, and it looks like that, right? I mean, I'm, you know, we're just making stuff up, right? Say all the frequencies in, in this range here, they would pass, right? And the frequency, so the frequencies in this range, they would pass because they wouldn't be attenuated very much. Frequencies out of this range, you see, they would fail. because um, they would become attenuated too much. And, and so using a configuration like this and putting a resistor as the bridge and an inductor and a capacitor on either side, you can create a bandpass filter. I think it's very interesting how these graphs can be uh, used uh, to determine um, the properties of an uh, LC, uh, RC, uh, and LCR filter. Um, so no longer do you have to memorize which filter does what, you just understand this and then you can figure it out for yourself. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope you learned uh, plenty about LCR filters.